Welcome to another journey into the power of the harvest with Pastor Charles Ellis. Power of the Harvest offers biblical answers to today's questions, all found in the Word of God. Allow Pastor Ellis to guide you through the Word as he teaches with clarity and transparency so that you can not only understand, but begin practicing the Word of God so your life can be forever changed. Now, listen to today's teaching on the power of the harvest with Pastor Charles Ellis. Good morning, each and every one of you. Thank you for joining me here at Harvest New Life Church and Harvest New Life Studios. We're going to be finishing that series out that we're going to kind of end that on today over there in the book of Exodus. As we're dealing with the heart of the heart of Pharaoh and some of the things that God was actually coming against him in terms of how he just rebelled 
Uh, he just didn't want to relent to what God wanted him to do. As I said before, as long as the presence of God's been with me here at Eleanor, Harvest New Life Church and Harvest New Life Studios. And uh, we're going to be opening up in prayer. We're going to get right into the Word this morning. This is going to be the last part of this series that I'm teaching on these four, uh, last four chapters. And uh, we're going to call it on this afternoon. We're going to get into the grid of it and just see just what happened this time or what can happen to any individual when they begin to rebel against the Word of God. And don't take heed to what the commandments of God has sent through His servants in the land in which we are living in. So I want you guys to sit back, relax, and the next time you hear my voice, we're going to be coming to you with the prayer, and we're going to open up and let's hear what God has to say as to speak to His servant on this morning. Father God, we thank you, we bless you, we honor you this morning. For God, we're giving us an opportunity to come before your throne. To hear what you have to say that's coming to the kingdom. Father God, filter through this word, through the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit. And even as I go forth, Father God, let me solidify myself according to you, Father God. That everything that I speak and everything I say be filtered through the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit. Father God, let it be a decree word that comes from the kingdom of God. Let no weapon be designed, engineered, or formed or fashioned against it. And Father God, even as we begin to speak, Father God, illuminate, transform, and change. Let the power of the convicting spirit begin to move up and down and all around. And Father God, let us shut down every negative thing that's not like you. I decree this word in the name of Jesus. That even as I begin to move forward, Father God, give me that what I need that comes from the kingdom of God. That I may know and understand that I'm truly sent as being your prophet in the season in which I'm in. Father God, that I may declare that all you have given me according to the kingdom of God. Father God, these things I speak not of myself, but the power of the Most High God. I sent forth a word this morning over to Saginaw, Michigan, to my mother, who's in a, pretty much at a, I ain't going to say critical, but an illness state. And we actually praying for all the mothers out there. As we begin to raise up the mothers before you, Father God, in the name of Jesus, and we begin to look upon them, Lord, and we begin to speak a word that comes from the kingdom, Father God. We begin to declare and decree that through you, Father God, that everything and all things are possible. Father God, you said with man it's impossible, but to you, Father God, all things are possible. So we thank you, Father God, for as we sent forth the word, Father God, as says the centurion soldier sent forth the word to his servant. Father God, we would declare, Lord, from the crown of the head, from the mole of the head, to the, uh, to, the, to, the, to the crowns, uh, to, the, to, the, to the surface, or to the heels of their feet. I mean, every area, every part of the body that it be healed, Father God even to the tip of their toe, that every internal organ, Father God, has got to line up according to the blood. I decree it right now in the name of Jesus, either by host of the name. As we begin to pray for every mother, Father God, who may be facing an illness or a sickness in their body, we cast out every disease, Father God, every pestilence that ever try to come against them, Father God, and with the life you have given them, Father God, that they may live, Father God, and live so lawfully, fall so lovingly, but that you will desire for them to have, even in their old age. Father God, I decree the word right now in the name of Jesus. I call the word that's got to go forth. I believe we'll not come back void, but it's already have the power to accomplish all that there is. These things I speak not of myself, but for you, Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I pray, Lord, amen. It's, it's been amazing that uh, we've been talking about the story dealing with the area of uh, uh, the egregious heart that uh, Pharaoh had against uh, the service of God and we started off earlier for those who are with us in this actual uh, four day series we've been teaching out of the we came out of Acts uh, not Acts well, the Acts is really on there. I gotta get into that we came out of the book of uh, Exodus and we started over in Exodus chapter 4 and we moved over to Exodus chapter 7 and we began to see the powerful word that came from the kingdom of God that uh, he declared and decreed that, that uh, he shall make Pharaoh, I mean, he shall make uh, Moses a god to Pharaoh. We look over in Exodus 7 and 1, we see the power of God's word. If we flip our scriptures, we get to look over the, for those who are turning along with us. We see the power of God's word come forth. And it said so that, uh, that he, so he uh, said to Moses, that I have made you. He said, I will make you. He said, I have already given to you. 
I made you a god to Pharaoh, and Aaron, your brother, should be thy prophet. And you're going to go in over there in Egypt, and you're going to whoop this man of God with a stick. And the words that come out of my mouth that I give you to speak on to him. The word declared and decreed, and it says it so strongly over in the book of uh, Exodus chapter 8. It talks about that 23rd verse, that uh, how God is about to make a difference between the people of Egypt and the people of Israel, the people of Goshen, God's chosen people. And the word of God decreed that we go over to the 8th chapter, we look over in the 8th chapter, how the word of God said that uh, by this time tomorrow, I'll make a difference between the people tomorrow. I'll make a difference between your people and my people. In other words, when we look at Exodus, uh, Exodus chapter 8 and the 23rd verse, he said, I will make a difference between my people, which is God's people, Israel, Goshen, the people of Israel, and your people, the people of the state of Pharaoh, the state of Egypt, as we say. And God said, this thing will come to fruition by this time tomorrow. And we're going to lead off that area of scripture teaching and how the word of God decrees according to the book of Isaiah 55 and 11, that every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God, it's got to go forth. It will not come back to the void, but it will accomplish all that then. Matter of fact, when you look at Isaiah 55 and 11, you'll see just that, how God proceeds and declares decrees. That even before you get to verse 11, he talks about how my thoughts and your thoughts as far as for the heavens and the earth. When God decrees a plan and declares a word, you better move on it. And I'm telling you, the heart and a feral heart didn't really understand until the disease began to come against him. All the different uh, plagues began to come against him. Uh, uh, all the gods that Pharaoh had set up over in the land of Egypt as representation to the people who dwelt in there. God's going to come in and he's going to knock down every one of his gods to prove to Pharaoh that I'm going to raise you up for this time, to prove to you that what you set up in your times or what you call your monuments or your strategies to prove that you, you rule the land. I'm going to show you that I'm going to shut you down by everything that proceeds out of the mouth of these two just layman men who I picked, Moses and his brother Aaron. I'm going to cause you to be to fall by the commands that they have in their mouth. And with the miracles of performance that I would do through them, you will come to understand that I am the God and the only God. In other words, for this purpose, Pharaoh, I've raised you up to harden your heart. I harden your heart because I'm going to whoop you. I'm going to whoop you and I'm going to show you that there's no other God that come against the God of the heavens, the God and creator of the universe. And I'm going to prove to you once and for all that I'm not a God that I shall lie, and I'm not a son of any man that I shall have to repent. In other words, you pick your hands on the wrong one. You're about to find out what I'm about to do to you in the series that we're speaking on. Well, we're going over to the book of uh, Exodus, uh, chapter 9, and we see over in chapter 9, over in the book of Exodus, and we begin to start the story as we left off yesterday, which is actually 9 and 16, but we're going to move a little swiftly here, but we're going to explain some things very uh, promptly that you'll get some of just the microcosms or some of just a uh, uh, solidification of what we're speaking here about these events that's about to take place against Reverend Pharaoh and the hardening of his heart because he rebelled against the word of God that sent through his servants. It says over in the book of uh, Acts, uh, not, ooh, the Acts is on me, I'm telling you, in the name of Jesus. It comes in the book of Exodus, um, over in the ninth chapter, and it goes over in the 15th verse. He said, Now I have stretched out my hand, and if I have struck out, if I, now if I have stretched out my hand and struck your people with pestilence, then you have been cut off from the earth. Now, now that's a very strong statement that, 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 that he's making there. In other words, I didn't really have to fight with you. I didn't have to do anything with you. All I had to do was just bat my eyes and you were gone. I didn't put all I need to put out toward you to show you that I'm the God in heaven. Because I could have destroyed you with just a twinkle of my eye. But I'm going to raise you up, Pharaoh, to prove to you that you are no match to the God in heaven. And even as it goes over and over in the 16 verses, indeed for this purpose I have raised you up that I may show my power in you and that my name may be declared through all the earth. I'm going to prove to you that you're fighting a God of heaven. you fight the omnipotent, and I'm the present God. And there's no way you're going to win. I'm a God who has never lost a battle, and I will never lose against you. You are mortal. I created you. I made you. I engineered you. But since you want to set out your own strategies and come up with your own God and your own tactics, as the word says, calls it, uh, I think it talks about self-agatizement, uh, one who actually empowers himself 
It makes them so.